Hi, it's Wayne O'Keefe from howtofish.com.au and I'm really trying an experiment uh, this evening. What's happened is that I'm down at Mornington Peninsula, I'm down at Dramana and the winds are coming through very, very heavily. What we've got is at the moment between 25 and um, about 35 kilometre winds with gusts up to 50 kilometres. Now I'm going to go and fish off one of the piers which sounds ridiculous because everything I have will blow off if I'm not careful. But what I really want to do is um, I want to see if I can catch some of the bigger fish that come in when you get those really heavy sort of uh, heavy windy conditions. Now the gear that I'm going to use, I'm going to use two of uh, my Bass Red fishing rods. Now these, these come with two top sections. So on both of them I'm going to be using the heavy section because I'm using slightly heavier line for this. I'm not going, I'm not finessing my fishing today because the conditions are going to be so bad. Um, I'm hoping that there'll be bigger fish about. The first rod that I've got is going to be a Paternoster rig with two droppers and they're a fair way apart. So the highest dropper has got a size six circle hook on it. I expect I'm not going to be able to see much action on the tip of the rod because um, the wind will be blowing things around, it'll be chaotic. So I'm going to hope that the fish hook themselves. I've used a, um, a T-knot to, to make the dropper so that it just holds that hook out. And then likewise with the other one, I've got a size 2 circle hook on that. There's a T-knot there to hold that dropper off. And then my weight is a 60 gram burley cage. And I do want to get burley into the area. I want burley to be um, sifting out with the tide, or actually it'll be coming in. I'm, I'm fishing into a, a, an incoming tide, but I want the burley to attract the fish. I'll be on a pier, so I'm gonna drop pretty much straight down. I am not gonna cast out because it's structure, the fish will be around the pier. So hopefully that will attract fish to that rig. Now the, the other rig that I'm using is a with a double hook rig. I uh, pretty much put two tied two hooks on. Uh, these are size six. One, the top one's a circle hook, the bottom one is a standard J curve. And the way that I've set it up is I've got a bit of weight there, I've got a small bean sinker on it because the water conditions are going to be so tough uh, and moving that I just want to keep I want to keep the bait from moving too far away. I want to have control over that. Uh, and the wind will blow the line which will move the, the bait off the bottom. But as you can see I've got two of them there. I've actually tied that on as a stinger hook so I'll be using pilchard for this and I'll put two hooks through that pilchard to hold it in place. I've got a red bead there just to protect the knot on the top hook because I've got a bean sinker that will be hitting that and then I've got that up to about 25 centimeters and I've got a small swivel at the top to, top of, to stop things you know, twirling around. So that, they are the two rigs I'm going to use today. I have no idea how this is going to go. It's going to be very hard for me to film there because the wind will be blowing. I won't be able to use a tripod for my, uh, for my camera. So I'll probably have a, a head mounted camera and uh, just see how that goes. So we're, uh, we're going to have a bit of excitement tonight. There's a, a few things I learned from this, but this, it was just interesting what happened. Um, as you've seen, I've caught that uh, small silver brim, and I caught a heap of those. You know, all about the, the, the size of your hand. Uh, the fish were biting well while the light was about, but they got, they got really explosive as it started to, to get dark. I had hoped to cast, well not cast, actually to drop my, uh, my bait down around near the pier. I couldn't do that because a large stingray was cruising around. Obviously the smell of, uh, of baits and things that are thrown into the water and stuff um, had attracted it and it was just it simply it stayed there for quite a while so obviously I didn't want to hook up with that poor old thing so I, I had to cast out a little bit to get away from that. Um, the, the double hook rig that I had, the, the one that was holding the pilchard where I thought there might be some big fish about 
was just, just getting belted by smaller fish. So uh, I'd have a full pilchard on there cast out, you know, really within a couple of minutes, it would be completely gone. Now, one thing, after I had been casting for about an hour uh, into the same spot and the burley was working, so this is the, uh, I started just using one rod, which is the one that had the, uh, the two hooks on the, the droppers with the burley cage at the bottom. Casting in after about an hour, um, I hooked into this. Now the, the, sorry, the filming wasn't that great because I had to sort of struggle to get my, um, my head camera on, but uh, you could see it was a banjo shark. Uh, it wasn't a huge fish and it was really easy to get the hook out, you know, because I was using circle hooks, caught in the corner of the mouth, got it out easily, was able to, to return that without any damage to the fish. Uh, I got other types of fish as well. Uh, and the next series sequence is just the snapshots of the, the fish I was catching just continuously, one after the other. It got to the point where when I was casting in, they were actually, I was hitting the fish on the drop. They were actually taking my bait before it even hit bottom. Um, the, the, the trouble with the circle hooks, of course, is you don't, cast, you don't strike into those. What happens is, what I was having to let happen was the, um, the fish to actually bite it. They, they were pretty ravenous, so the good thing was that they were swallowing, or they were grabbing the hook, and, um, and then a lot of them were actually just hooking themselves as they tried to swim away with the bait. Uh, one thing I was doing was just basically, um, I was, once I felt that there was a bit of pressure on the rod, I would just pull slightly. So I put maintain pressure and just basically wind in effectively. So keeping that tension on so that as the hook sort of came out of the mouth, it would catch in the corner. And then I started to get this sequence of events getting right into the darkness. So you won't be able to be able to see much of what I caught, but you'll notice they're all the same size. Now I don't have film of all the fish that I caught, uh, but once I, I got that burly uh, really working, there was there were times when they were taking um, the the bait soon after it hit water after it hit the water after I'd cast in. Um, I got a garfish on the way down, and a really good sized garfish, which unfortunately I didn't get a photo of. But um, the the numbers or the variety of fish was quite good. I got Tommy Ruff, I got Silver Brim, I got little Pinkies, uh, I got that banjo shark, I got that garfish, I got toadfish, as you'd expect but it was really quite an extensive range of fish. And really what made it was, one was the burley. There was a, a guy next to me, he was going for garfish with a float and he was just trickling out burley as well. He got some good garfish that night. So the burley was bringing the fish in um, and then chicken was working for everything. So I had prawns, I had pilchard and I had chicken and the chicken outfished everything. Um, with the spicy chicken formula on it, what was happening was that I'd had, with those two droppers, it was easy to work out which, which bait was most preferred. And uh, they would take the chicken before they actually took the, the prawn. And I guess the final thing is that um, what happened is the circle hooks were helping a lot when I couldn't see the tip of the rod. As it got dark, there, were, there is lighting on the piers, but you can't always be sitting right where the light is most effective. So the, uh, the fish were hooking themselves on that. So I couldn't see the tip of the rod. I couldn't strike into them. Most of the time I was actually holding the rod and just feeling it, but sometimes I would put it down uh, and the, the fish were able to hook themselves. Standard J hook, I'd probably have to do a lot more striking into the fish. 
when the, of course when they're biting as ravenous, ravenously as they uh, they did today they do tend to hook themselves a bit more but those conditions so fishing after you've had heavy winds and uh, disruptive heavy conditions especially as it starts to calm can really bring those fish on and what had happened is that that's exactly what happened the the weather actually calmed when I went fishing it calmed when I was on the end of that pier so that is a real trigger for some of the smaller fish to come in and bite as you saw they were so look if you've liked this video please give us a thumbs up and subscribe